Hey, today I'm going to be recapping episodes 19 through 21 of Eternal Love. The battle starts and everything is going according to plan. Yehua allows the Mermaid King to land a non-fatal blow. Unfortunately, he butt dials Susu. She overhears the fighting and, fearing for his life, leaves the cottage to find him, allowing someone from the Celestial tribe to find her. Sujin also picks up Yehua's mirror. Susu is brought before the Heavenly Lord. He wants to have her killed until Yehua's mom, Le Xu, finds out that she is pregnant with Yehua's child and pleads for her to be spared, at least until she delivers. Yehua wakes up and after Lian Song explains the situation, he's devastated as he realizes they have lost any chance for a normal life now that the Heavenly Lord knows about her. The Mermaid Clan are technically part of the Ghost Tribe, and so Li Jing is invited to the Celestial Tribe to answer for them. Shen Yu reveals that on the night she pretended to be Xi'an to distract him while Yan just stole the seal, he impregnated her. Susu is being treated really poorly at the Celestial Tribe. I mean, I know they don't want her as a daughter-in-law, but she is still pregnant. Sujin identifies Susu as the woman in the mirror. Feng Zhe goes to confront Susu about her relationship with Yahua, since it might reflect badly on Bai Qian again, but just ends up feeling sorry for her. Li Jing is worried about Xuan Yu's pregnancy, but this witch doctor guy assures him everything is fine. It's obviously not though. I mean, imagine you ask this question, and your spouse and the doctor stare at each other meaningfully for seven seconds with ominous music playing in the background before turning back to you and saying, oh yeah, everything is great. The truth is that the baby has already died, and if she gives birth, it will be stillborn. They head to the Celestial Tribe. Li Jing's servant boy, what's this kid's name, accidentally sets fire to Susu's abode, so Li Jing has to save her. He takes her back to his room, where the shaman doctor reveals that she is a pregnant mortal. Big blow to Li Jing, who thought he might have finally found Xi Yin. Though he knows she is not Xi Yin, he's still a little too friendly with her for Shen Yu's taste. Before they can get any information from each other, Le Xu swoops in and takes Susu away. The Heavenly Lord finally goes to see Yehua and confronts him about his affair with Susu. To protect her, Yehua pretends she is not very important to him and that he was only trying to repay her for saving his life. You know, by putting a baby in her. Outside, Sujin shows the Heavenly Lord the Copper Mirror as proof that their relationship is not as simple as it seems. Yehua returns to the palace to find Susu talking to his mother. He's forced to ignore her. Later, he meets her at her palace and after sending away the maids, is finally able to speak to her. He explains that he will have to treat her coldly, but it's not because he doesn't love her. He leaves her with a trusted maid, Nai Nai. After leaving Changxi, Li Yan has made his way to the north and started a rebellion. Time passes and Susu suffers through pregnancy on her own as Yehua pretends not to care and carries out his princely duties. Shen Yu finds out that though she is tolerated as Li Jing's wife, she is not allowed to wander around the palace thanks to her betrayal of the Celestial Tribe during the Great War. Su Jin chats with Susu, hinting that Yehua has had a crush on her since they were young. She then offers to take Susu out for a stroll since there's a big banquet that day for the Heavenly Lord. Even though Yehua told her not to trust anyone, she agrees to go. Su Jin has Nai Nai stay behind, another red flag. They take a detour to the Healing Spring, where Yehua is meeting with the Heavenly Lord and overhear their conversation about his engagement to Bai Qian. Obviously orchestrated by Su Jin, though Susu has no way of knowing that. Su Jin also sends a message to Nai Nai, telling her to bring Susu's fan to the banquet. Just before the banquet, Sung Ji, the Heavenly Lord's second son, requests a title for Xiao Xing as she is now pregnant. That idea is shot down. Guess he's still mad. Before the festivities can start, Nai Nai arrives with the fan. She's tripped and drops the fan, startling the Lord of Treasures, Phoenix, as it still remembers the fan from its fight with Xi Yin. The bird injures Li Jing and Feng Zhou before Yehua manages to subdue it. Di Jin takes Feng Zhou away to heal her in private. Meanwhile, the Heavenly Lord is pissed about this whole Phoenix affair, especially since the person injured is a member of Bai Qian's family. Su Su tries to defend herself to no avail. After some back and forth, the Lord of Treasures finally shows up to take the blame, which, yeah, really, how do you still not have that thing under control? The Heavenly Lord agrees to let it go, but Yahua makes a show of grounding Susu anyway, partly to continue to appear cold and partly to protect her from schemes like this one. Sujin finally tells the Heavenly Lord her wish, to be made one of Yahua's concubines. Inheriting concubines is apparently a thing that happens because the Heavenly Lord agrees as long as she can help him get rid of Susu. Thanks to Di Jin, Feng Zhou has made a full recovery. She decides to stay in her fox form to be close to Di Jin without causing him as many problems. Li Jing receives a message that his men have located Li Yuan. He's the guy leading the rebellion in the north. Li Jing is summoned to see the Heavenly Lord. Till next time, thanks for watching.